And I want to remind you, you can also watch the 2014 Nebraska High School Boys Bowling Championships on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can do that at netnebraska.org slash sports or on the new NET Nebraska app. Ready for action in Class B, boys? We've already crowned two state champs. An impressive performance in Class C by North Bend. We hope to see some more impressive action here in Class B as Hastings takes on Aurora. Here's a look at Hastings. Head coach Butch Hogan, Chris Christen, Chandler Heisel is a senior. The freshman Mullen and Bladen Hogan. Riley Sad is a senior along with Wyatt Davis, Wyatt Goddle, and Nick Christen. Aurora led by head coach Dan Velasic, Devron Leonard, Burson, Gimple, Kinneman, Ramirez, and Larson makes up the Huskies lineup. First ever trip for Aurora to the finals. The Hastings just make this part of their annual schedule. All the action coming up next right here on NET Sports. Behind your outlet are more than 6,000 public power employees working tirelessly to generate and deliver safe, affordable, reliable electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Since they are customer owners themselves, you can count on them to have your best interests and those of the community they serve at heart. Neighbors serving neighbors. That's public power. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenue. Provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. NET Sports brings the best Nebraska high school and college athletics into your home. Now, NET Sports is on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash NET Sports to like us and get all the latest updates. Right on our timeline, watch highlights from our live events, and check out our exclusive in-depth background features. It's all on facebook.com slash NET Sports and facebook.com slash Big Red Wrap Up. Watch NET Sports anytime, anywhere. Download the free NET Nebraska app today. Watch live streaming of the NSAA High School Championships, college player profiles, full-length episodes from Big Red Wrap-Up, and so much more. The new NET Nebraska app makes it easier than ever to follow the NET Sports you want, when and where you want it. Get the app at netnebraska.org slash apps. Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, along with Steve Sipek, I'm Larry Putney. Good to have you with us back here in Lincoln for the State High School Bowling Championships, Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. We've already crowned two state champs today in Class D and Class C. Now we head to Class B, where a perennial power is taking on a relative newcomer into the state championships. It's Hastings and Aurora, the Tigers of Hastings. This is their sixth trip in eight years. They're going after their third championship in the last four. And for Aurora, first time. It's, a, it's quite the atmosphere here, Larry. We got Gangnam style playing, the crowd's going crazy. Everybody's excited. We've, a lot of fans made the drive in on 
Less than ideal road conditions today for uh, see if Hastings can win again. And big crowd from Aurora coming down to see their Huskies for the first time. Class B really has been dominated over the last oh, five to seven, eight years by this Hastings squad. Well, it's another program that comes out of a great youth program. Butch Hogan past high lanes and his wife Donna and, and his partners out there just uh, do a great job taking care of youth bowling and it feeds right into your high school programs which feeds right into your hopefully continuing to feed into their uh, lives with uh, league bowling so they've just been around every time and a couple of first place uh, championships in 2007 2011 and then last year 2013 so trying for the back to back here we go Chandler Heisel will start it off Crossover leaves the six pin. Some early jitters, a little tuggy with the ball. A trademark of, uh, of Butch Hogan's uh, teams and uh, also his his girls teams too. They tug the ball. Well, they well everybody tugs the ball now and then, but they're great spare shooters. Uh, they've always been very accurate, very very accurate in their spares. So DJ Leonard, he gets the head pin to kick the seven and take it straight back. You know, in these Baker games and Baker matches, anything can happen. You get hot, somebody gets a carry, it feeds, everybody feeds off the momentum. The other team might see what's going on. Maybe you miss a spare early. You never know what can happen in these type of events when it's Baker bowling. Just opened my big mouth and made him miss his first spare right out, right out of the gate. So chance for Aurora to jump on top early here with a double. They take a 21-pin lead. Adrian Ramirez. Good for us with a solid game and gets the carry as well. That's an early double for the Huskies. Adrian, just look at his bio sheet. If he's not playing linebacker or something for Aurora High School, he should. It is a big boy and he throws the ball really good. Marcel Mullen leaves it a bit wide, the freshman. Very steady freshman. A couple of talented freshmen on this Hastings squad. Just keep reloading out there in Hastings. Derek Larson. Larson, the lefty, comes in a little high, trips that seven. That's what we're talking about. All of a sudden, the pins start to fall. You get a carry or two. The other team doesn't. We've seen it, Larry, in both boys and girls shows in the past over the last seven years we've done this. It doesn't take much for momentum to change, but uncharacteristically, a couple of early open frames for Hastings. And right back at you with Aurora. You see the look off, the glance off to the side before he began. Just in this kind of environment with so much going on around you, the lights and the camera and the crowd and no TV, it's so important to remain focused. And what a shot by Bladen Hogan, <laughs> another freshman. He, he's, his approach reminds me of a field goal kicker. Uh, a, a field goal kicker just plants that foot and and you know, obviously swings his leg through, but uh, Bladen just rips the finger holes out of that ball, and right back comes Aurora with a with another strike, another big ball by number 17 there. Zach, Zach Gimple. Gimple, very good shot. Gimple kicks that 10 forward and nearly got a carry there. I remember Riley Sad from last year. Riley Sad, uh, a great lefty, throws the ball real well. You know, it's it's actually even though they've got a couple seniors on there, those two freshmen on there on the Hastings team, Larry. I wouldn't say it's a complete rebuilding job, but they're bowling really well with two true freshmen in the in the lineup there. Another good shot by the anchor bowler Jory Burson for Aurora. There's Riley. Very solid player is the senior Riley Sad, who averaged 200 this year. Pick those spares up, boys. So important. They just open the door after taking a, an enormous lead. Hastings opens the first two. They throw a double on top of that, find themselves with a 30-pin lead, and they give it back on two single-pin misses. Strike here puts it back within 10. Wyatt Davis can't get that to go. A spare here, and we're just about even. Riley Sad and Wyatt Davis were the catalysts for winning that state championship last year. Those two boys dominated last year's mm -hmm. uh, state finals. Lefty and a righty. Oh boy. Well, 
They slip by. They, they will settle in. Those will start to come. Aurora's fairly lucky to get out of this with a 19-pin lead as they switch sides for yeah. the second half of the first game. Well, and you can also say Hastings is lucky to be down by only 19. That's true. That's true. 85-57 in the fifth. Back to the top of the order. Here's Chandler Heisel. Chandler bowled four years on varsity also. Part of that team. Just, wow, that's. Uh, he winds it up, doesn't he? Reminiscent of a la Pete Weber. The high arm swing, open shoulder. Just pulls through the ball at the point of release. Now DJ Leonard. A little more straight up the boards. Crosses over and gets the carry. Mullen, the freshman, trying for the double. They've made the adjustment, playing a little more straight up the boards. Back outside a little bit, playing, as you said, Larry, straight up the boards, a little less belly in the ball, meaning that the ball's going to go a little more direct towards the pins. Watch Adrian Ramirez here. Watch his hand. Look how it's cupped under the ball, preparing for maximum revolutions at the point of release. What happened there was he just got a little too deep inside with his feet. Now, on the other side of the physiological buildup, look at that release by young Bladen Hogan. Wow. Back to back strikes for Hogan. That is what you see on television, folks. You turn on the PBA tour on ESPN or or watch any of the, some of the collegiate bowling you may see, and you see that, just that snap of the wrist and the fingers underneath the ball at the point of release. But you live and die by that release. And what you're seeing now is the single pin misses. That's the only opens we have. We have one seven, we have one other spare miss earlier, but single pin spares just giving away tons of pinfall. Pin hits the sweeps, are gonna carry it. Yes, that's a strike. Wow, got it late. That's a strike. The pin spotter table did not touch the pin. It, was, it fell late, but as long as it was not interfered with by the pin setter, it is a strike, and that'll be a correction that they'll make. So Hastings catapults into the lead with that three-bagger in frames six, seven, and eight, Larry. And you saw Derek Larson react to it when he was on the lane, shaking his head. Yeah. Last thing you want to do is let something like that affect you, right? Might have, because uh, it can. Might not have been a bad shot to back off to. Yep, uh, absolutely. Maybe just regroup for just a little bit. Uh -huh. But that was uh, absolutely a strike. As I said earlier, the as long as the spotting table or the pin setter does not interfere with the pin, as it falls, it counts. Good, yep. solid shot by Davis. Must have been a uh, sale at Pro Cuts <laughs> this morning, a Sunday morning sale, as we've got uh, we've got quite a bit of uh, usage with the number one Clippers. Everybody's sporting their their Unity Mohawks, trying and to fire up the crowd and themselves. So Hastings. In route to a win in game number one. As that comes in light, leaves a small split. Potential 205 for Hastings. And there you see it. And the carry. So 195 for the Tigers. And that will be enough to take game number one. Well, Aurora bowled well. Too many open frames. They threw a lot of strikes. So what uh, Coach Velocic needs to do now is to just settle them down, remind them that spares are what is going to keep you in the match. Going to sub in here, Jory Burson. Or actually, Jory bowled earlier. Excuse me. All their haircuts are the same, so got a little, <laughs> a little confused there. Jory moves way inside. As you see, a lot of conditioner, a lot of oil in the center part of the lane. Caused the ball to skid. 195 to probably going to be with us 
be around 144 or so, Larry. So they pick up half those spares. They're right in the hunt. Great conversion. Great conversion. One more shot at it for Jory Burson. Now wants to get Jory lined up, no doubt, for game number two. A little further right on the approach. Slow Better down. result. Yep, a little further right. That might stay right there. So 195, 149 is the final in game number one. Hastings takes a 1-0 lead in this best of five Baker format. The Tigers looking for their second consecutive and third state championship in the last four years. Well, NET Sports brings you the finals of NSAA High School Swimming and Diving Championships live from the Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. Championships begin at 8 a.m. on NET1. A live webcast will be available on our website and on the new NET Nebraska app, so be sure to Download the app and catch all of the action from the 2014 NSAA Swimming and Diving Championships next week. All right, ready to go here in game number two, Aurora and Hastings. It'll be DJ Leonard starting it again for the Huskies. Huskies were three and six in conference play this year. Once again, a testament to you can get hot late and find yourself right here battling for a state championship. That comes up light, leaves the 1-2. Needs to react, and it does. Wyatt Gottle with that last strike for Hastings. Going in early in the match. And DJ Leonard converts. And now here's Nick Kristen. Also in for the first time in the match. And Kristen can't get the 10 to fall. Good shot there. Nice straight arm swing. Doesn't quite hook it as much and hit the ball as hard as some of the other players on his team and on Aurora's team, but nice and accurate shot. Once again, there's Adrian Ramirez for Aurora. Watch how he cups that hand under the ball. It's a great shot of it there. Bam, snaps it through, but hung on with just a little bit. He's got his thumb on the left side of the ball. Thumb came out a little late. Caused him to pull the ball, easy spare. Now Kristen to pick up the 10 pin. And a good cover by Nick Kristen. He's gonna switch to a different ball for a spare. He's gonna use a, that my friend is the Columbia Blue Dot. That was really the first ball that came out in the 70s that was made specifically to go straight when lanes are dry. And a good cover. Now, even though Adrian Ramirez is built more like a lineman or a linebacker, watch what this young man does to the ball. True freshman, Bladen Hogan. Average 187. Plants that foot and snaps the ball through. Wow. Three shots, three strikes for Hogan. Probably no need for him to wear bowling shoes. He's not going to do any sliding out there. <laughs> Plants that foot at the foul line and pulls through the shot. Another change he in Aurora's not, lineup, Larry. Sorry about that. I mean, the more impressive thing with Hogan, not bothered at all by the guy. You can just tell he feels that home. Of course, he's seen his dad be here for sure. the last seven or eight years. But not intimidated at all by the environment. He's grown up in a bowling center, too. Yeah. Mom and dad on pastime lanes in Hastings. Ooh, tough break there. Either way, it would have been a tough split, but Aurora now with a, another strike is going to take over the lead. And a hook. Ooh, 
this is probably uh, one of the matches, Larry, where we've had the most different amount of styles of bowling. We've got left-handers that really hook the ball. Gave it a run. Like Riley Sad, we've got, got some got some right-handers that throw the ball fairly straight. We've got some right-handers that are in-betweeners, like this young man right here, Zach Gimple. And then we got some right-handers, like this, probably the, the smallest one out there, the freshman Bladen Hogan that hooks it as much as the bigger kids. So a lot of different styles. And, and that can have a little bit of an impact on the lane condition that we'll be on today with different bowling balls going in different directions in different parts of the lane can disperse that oil in areas to make it uh, react maybe a little inconsistent. We might begin to be seeing a little bit of that right now. Last couple shots have come up light for a few bowlers. Ball's not hooking as much as the oil has carried down to the back part of the lane. Oh, off the wall comes the head pin and carries the two. The strike for Jory Burson. That's a big one because this is an important conversion now for Hastings. Stay in the lead. Got it. Good cover. Great shot by Wyatt Davis. Two teams will now switch sides. One pin separating the two. 67-66, Aurora with a strike working. But Vantage Huskies. Some of the Hastings fans, boy, they travel well. And a great shot, good answer. Wyatt Gottle. Another senior from last year's team. Wyatt just off the bench, two shots, two strikes. You'll see DJ Leonard here, a little more of a straighter player, not as much hook, down the middle portion of the lane. Out of trouble. And now a chance for the Tigers to take the lead. Here's Nick Kristen. Looking at his mark down at the lane. Just. See, the oil is beginning to carry down a little bit, and you're going to see it a little more with our, our Class A and Class B events as you have more players. You have five-player teams versus four, plus you typically will have bowlers that will be throwing a little more of the uh, more progressive reactive resin equipment, causes more flare. The ball actually right. flares on the track, and it will bring more oil down to the rear part of the lane. Kristen covers up the spare, so good conversion. And keeps it tight, one pin difference. Aurora with the slight lead. Ramirez ripping through, good shot. Can it get back? Not quite. Just right, it's hung on his thumb just a touch. There's Hogan again. And again, just a little hot. I do believe lane 27 might be hooking just a little more than 28, Larry, which, you know, you've got some uh, different elements here today that you don't, don't normally see in league play. You've got television lights on the lanes that are going to play a little bit of havoc, uh, possibly. Uh, you know, every bowling lane is a little different. They're not all going to be exactly the same. We've seen more shots go light on 28, like right there, than on 27. Big time spare here for Hastings. Give them a commanding lead with a spare here. Switching to a hard plastic ball to go straight. Ooh. Even though that's a hard plastic ball, it narrowly avoids the chop. Aurora really needs a strike here, Larry, to stay close. Big time, uh, important spare. On the right hand, make it left hand lane. Riley Sad just comes in a little high, leaves that six pin. You saw him the frame before uh, that he bowled, the earlier frame where he bowled on 28, left the seven and the nine, which was part of a light hit. 27, he comes in just a little bit high there. Looks like he may have slowed down a touch, but. Left-handed delivery from Austin Kinneman. And Kinneman with the cover. 
Here's Sad to cover and does. Hastings just trying to stay clean now and they'll go up two games to none. An important shot here for Aurora. A double can get them back into this. A little weak 10. Ball went long, made its move to the pocket. That's just a little late. Six pin typically goes into the 10 to carry it out. Six pin went into the flat gutter alongside the 10, didn't come out. Strike here by Hastings. We'll go a long way to wrap up game two, not quite. Spare is an absolute here for Aurora. Zach needs to pick up this 10 pin. Uh oh, yeah, that's a toughie. That might do it. It's a 140. Best they can have is 170, already 171 for Hastings. So the Tigers have taken game number two. The Tigers take the first two and now lead it 2-0 here in this Class B State Championship. Good cover. <laughs> 170, the best Aurora can have. Solid shot, first in the tenth. It'll be Wyatt Davis finishing it off on the left-hand lane for the Hastings High Tigers. One seventy-eight for Hastings and Aurora. Crosses over, we'll shoot. Potential 160. Nearly 160, yep. Well, now your coach Velocic for Aurora and the Huskies need to sit down and, you know, really, uh, with the exception of the split Hastings had in the fourth frame, another relatively clean game for Hastings and might just be seeing the experience and the power that they have uh, begin to take hold, but Aurora gave them a run for their money most of that game, so can't preach enough to pick up your spares. Eliminate your chances to fall further behind. So 2-0, Hastings over Aurora. Now we head to game number three. 178, 159. You might be wondering, you know. We are wondering, Larry. Well, the pink wristbands, right? Oh, I mean, Hastings has those pink wristbands on. Had a team member last year who was part of their state championship team a year ago. His name was Matt Starkey, and Matt wasn't able to bowl this year just because heavy school load and also some soccer commitments, but his mom and dad remained very supportive of the team. And on Monday, February 3rd, Matt had a 22-year-old sister who died. She was a, a special needs graduate of Hastings High and really provided a lot of unity and love and strength to this Hastings program. And it's their way of remembering Matt's sister and the daughter of the Starkeys. So they're wearing those pink wristbands as a remembrance to Annie Starkey. A solid shot there. Leaves a rip nine. It's a tight knit program out in Hastings. Absolutely. It's the atmosphere that Butch and Donna Hogan and their coaches have created over seven years of youth bowling and high school bowling. And that's what makes a successful program, is to have that type of family atmosphere for all the boys and the parents to do that is a, a testament to that. And a crossover and carry. Nick Kristen goes Brooklyn. It's time for Aurora to get back on the horse here. They need to fire themselves up, fire their teammates up. Some long faces there and the paddock area so they need to
Thompson. A little bit of a fire lit underneath him, and this gentleman, the way he rips the finger holes out of the ball, can do that with a strike, but instead gets a terrible break. <laughs> one four. The one four. You just, you just don't see that a lot in bowling. But that right hand lane, Larry, if you notice, is definitely playing tighter than the left hand lane. And as you see, Bladen, Bladen Hogan go a little high there on that shot. So it's a little bit of uh, thinking, a little bit of uh, strategy you're going to have to play. This is actually, it's actually, believe it or not, even though you'd like to strike every ball, this is actually good as you're going to have to execute different shots a little bit. You're going to have to think a little bit instead of just getting up there and throwing the ball to the right. You're going to have to make sure you understand which lane you're on, what each lane is doing. Yep. Cross lane at the 6 and the 10 with a plastic ball. Goes straight. Well done. Good cover by Bladens. And a commanding lead by Hastings here in game number three. Aurora really trying to find something here. Here's Austin Kinneman. Austin's sophomore lefty. What a smooth stroke he has. Very straight. Spins it out, knocks down the five. Austin averages 164, sophomore. Tied for the high average on the team in Nebraska High School Bowling Federation play. And a solid rip by the other freshman. Marcel Mullen. And now a must spare here. Or Kinneman. Get that ball all the way over to the 10 and does. This is a very straight up the board, simple and effective game as Austin Kinneman. Back in the 1960s and 70s, that'd be considered hooking the ball a lot. In today's world, it's considered just a, yeah. just a, a very smooth, Wyatt. temporary bowler. Wyatt may not have liked the shot, spun around, rolled his eyes, but got the carry. Not sure if that sat in there for him or if you got it wide and it reacted. Either way, it worked. Well, Hastings has began to show why they are repeat every year, basically. I don't think, Larry, I can think back to a year where we haven't either had a Hastings girl or boys team yeah. on the telecast. And you're seeing the reason why here as they are just pretty much running away with everything on today's telecast. Aurora frame behind a hole, another one. It's time to reach down. It's only the fifth frame. A couple, two, three strikes here, and they're right back in it. Best of five. We've seen plenty of matches in the past where you're down two and you come back to win. Just right now, they're having trouble on that right-hand lane, getting the ball to hook up to the pocket. Typical move would be to take your feet wherever he is standing. So wherever Jory is standing on the approach, you, the old adage, miss right, move right. So he would move his feet to the right and be a little more direct with the ball. Switches balls for the spare. Got a good cover, and these two teams now will switch lanes with Hastings firmly in command as Aurora has three opens in the first five frames. Hastings working on a double. Well, you can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter, add a comment, or catch up on the latest Nebraska sports info. Just be sure to go out there and like NET Sports. You can like Big Red Wrap Up and join the conversation and discussion on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Following us right now, Larry. There you go. Nobody's Twittering about me and you, though. Well, I've found that if they're not talking about you, that's a good thing. That's true. Tough break. Puts the ball in the pocket, leads the 4-9. Just nothing's going right now for Aurora. Shame that their first appearance here at, at the state finals is going to likely end up the way it's beginning to look. But, boy, it's just very focused look from Heisel and rips the rack solid 10. And now a 40-pin lead. Hastings. Got to go for the conversion here at this point. Slide the four into the nine. Ball's got to get all the way over to the left side. Got a chance. So the spare conversion here will make it a 50 pin lead. And make it. Oh. That just slides off. Well, they're leaving the door cracked open. Just a crack. 41 pin leads, not insurmountable. But 
going to have to. Might want to strike here. Yes. So Adrian Ramirez on the left-hand lane. This is the hooking lane of the two. Obviously just struggling with the carry down on the lane, the oil being drugged down the lane by the ball. His lanes are not hooking nearly as much as they were in practice as that conditioner has gotten down to the rear part of the lane. Both teams still struggling a little bit with getting the ball up to the pocket, but Hastings so far, with the exception of the gutter nine count in first frame. This is really one of those examples of when you learn from your teammates. You know what your teammates' reaction typically is like. You, you, you see them consistently coming up wider, even leaving twos or two tens, not getting back to the head pin. You think, I either have to ball up or I'm going to have to move right. And I don't mean like a two and one move. This needs to be, you know, I'm going to go three and two, five and three, and see what's out there. Correct. And, and by balling up, Larry, means uh, – uh, you take the bowling ball uh, that you're using. Hold it over your head. Yeah, do oh. that or else you go back to the bag <laughs> and pull something out that's a little more aggressive. Hooks a little more. Or, yep. or would have a different layout, a different layout, meaning that the way the ball is uh, centered with your grip mm -hmm. can control the, the, uh, either the amount of hook or, or hook earlier. Right now, just judging by how the lanes are, you'd want something that would hook earlier, not necessarily have to get more aggressive with the cover. Right but you'd want something to get into a roll a little bit earlier as everybody seems to be struggling getting that ball up in the pocket. Except the lefty. And you know there that. some solid shots. He has. He's been around the pocket the entire match. Then you got Bladen here who just rips the holes out of the ball. Now, he might have made a little bit of an over adjustment yep. by seeing his teammates coming up a little bit light. Yep. But they've got the the lead now to where we've got a little bit of room to to maneuver. Cross lane at the seven and hangs on. Good cover by Kinneman. Here's Hogan. Giving it a run. Ooh, good try, good try. So still a 30 plus pin lead despite the open for Hastings. Not quite back to the pocket again. Well, Coach Stan Velasic from Aurora is uh, this is a fairly new program. I do believe probably they're only third or fourth year in the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation and uh, you know, has uh, been a consistent, has had teams consistently the last three, four years. Growing a program takes time to get this far as uh, another step towards continuing to grow and become a force in Class B. They have a lot of talent on the team. They throw the ball real well. Just learning lane conditions. And, you know, that's one of the unique things, too, Larry. You get a chance to go around and bowl at different bowling centers and see different lane conditions. And it always makes a makes it good when you can see different uh, places and bowl and get out of your comfort zone for the way the bowling ball reacts. And today, uh, obviously, it's uh, confused a few people with the way the ball's reacted. But... You know, it, it doesn't hurt to go home and practice on lane conditions that are not your normal house shot. Uh, at our facility in Elkhorn, we have five high school teams bowling there, and, and there's a lot of times that we, you know, uh, either we don't condition the lanes uh, so they see a little bit of a hooking condition. There's a lot of times we don't clean the lanes. That sounds bad, but by not cleaning it doesn't mean you're getting filthy, but it just changes the, the back end reaction. And then there's times we put down a whole completely different condition that they normally wouldn't see on their Saturday morning youth league or in practice. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, you have to learn, and we've said it before, like in golf, you've got to hit every club in your bag. In bowling, you have to learn to be able to play what the lanes give you. Jory Burson will finish it up here on the left-hand lane. I think Hastings still deciding exactly what their strategy will be to pick up the spare. They want to give everybody an opportunity to bowl, obviously. The state championship already wrapped up for Butch Hogan, Chris Kristen's team. And there you see the 10 pins sitting out there, and they're talking it over now. And this a in memory of the Starkey family. The final shot rolled down the middle and the rose laid at the lane. 
in memory of Matt's sister, who was a member of their team last year. And the Starkey family and the death of Matt's sister. Well, I am sure that Matt's sister is happy they're bringing home some hardware, too, to go at Hastings High School. When we come back, we'll hear from the champs. Medals and trophies will be awarded right here on NET Sports. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey honey, thanks for depositing that check for me today. Love you. Uh Love you too. I love you more. I love you way more. You're the best. You're way better. You're my huggy bear. In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Blackberry, U.S. Bank is there when you need us. Canadian folk singer Gordon Lightfoot performs his timeless hits in this very special concert. Don't miss this legendary songwriter and five-time Grammy nominee, Gordon Lightfoot, live in Reno, Friday night at 8 Central on NET1. NET Sports brings you all the action from the NSAA High School Swimming and Diving Championships Saturday, March 1st, live from the Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. Watch NSAA High School Swimming and Diving Championships beginning at 11 a.m. Central on NET One. A live webcast will be available at our website and on the new NET Nebraska app. We're back at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. Class P State Championship is in the books. The Hastings Tigers knock off Aurora. It's a sweep 3-0. And with the champions, here's Steve Simpeck. Thanks, Larry. Three out of four years, Coach Hogan, back-to-back -back, uh, state championships. Uh, we've asked some of the other coaches in some of the other matches, both boys and girls in the past. Uh, Hastings is, uh, is a regular here, and, and we can't remember the last time, Larry and I can't, that the last time we didn't have a telecast with either a Hastings girls or boys high school team on it. Uh, just quickly give us a little, uh, a little bit on what keeps the Hastings high school program so consistent. I think just the tradition the school has of the, the way they've been backed. Uh, by Hastings High, uh, yearbooks in the use, uh, newspaper they have there at the high school. They letter the kids in the sport of bowling, and it's just been phenomenal. So it's, you know, it's tradition, and they just, it seems like we get kids that never bowled before in their life, but, but want to come out and bowl for Hastings High. So it's been great. Well, it's a te it's a testament to the coaching. Obviously, you have a lot of coaches that help you out just besides you and your wife. Got to throw Donna in there. Don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah, Chris. Christian is uh, probably one of the best 
coach, assistant coach, head coach, whatever you want to want to call him. But he takes he takes raw talent and and gives me monsters uh, for varsity. And it's just shooting different boards by the time I get him. He has them that that advanced. Well, that's great. And speaking of monsters, here's your left-handed monster here, Riley. Riley. So this is your third state championship, right? Uh, it's actually my second. It's the team's third. Um, I was not lucky enough to get on varsity, but Wyatt Davis himself was. This is his third championship. Um, but man, I've you know we got two freshmen. We're looking forward for them coming up. We got four seniors. I've been with them all all four years. And uh, you know, going back to your question about how we stick together, to me that's that's a second family. You know, I look at all one of those. Throw all my brothers, Coach Kristen and Coach Hogan are like second father to me. So uh, you know, going out there, I just don't want to disappoint them and disappoint my family. And I know. If, you know, I miss a shot or I don't strike, you know, we got seven bowlers. They all got to back me, and they do it. They keep me up. None of us get down. And uh, basically our excitement as a team and a family brings us together and makes us a lot of fun. Well, Riley, congratulations. Great job, Butch, on back-to-back -back state championships. Class B boys, Larry, back-to-back -back championships for the Hastings Tigers. Back to you. All right, thanks, Steve. And Riley Sad said it so well. Could not have said it any better. What high school bowling means to these young athletes, what an outstanding performance. And you see Riley was first team All-State along with two of his teammates. Wyatt Gottel was finished third and Bladen Hogan finished fifth. All the top five first team All-State, including Jory Burson from Aurora, who was the state medalist, and the next five second team All-State. Now for the introductions and the medal and trophy presentations, let's go down to Greg Porchy. Ladies and gentlemen, how about one more round of applause for our two finalists? And now for the awards presentation, your Class B boys runner-up, the Aurora Huskies, coached by Stan Velasic and James Froge. Number 15, DJ Leonard. Number 20, Derek Larson. Number 22, Adrian Ramirez. Number 17, Zach Gimple. Number 21, Jory Burson. Number seven, Austin Kinneman. And gentlemen, here's your runner-up trophy. Congratulations to the Aurora Huskies, your Class B boys runner-up. Now, here is your 2013-2014 Class B boys champions, Hastings High Tigers. Coaches Butch Hogan and Chris Kristen. Number 12, Chandler Heisel. Number 24, Marcel Mullen. Number 36, Bladen Hogan. Number five, Riley Sad. Number 42, Wyatt Davis. Number eight, Wyatt Goodell. Number six, Nick Kristen. Yeah. 
And gentlemen, here's your championship trophy. Once again, congratulations to the 2013-2014 Class B Boys Champions. Back-to-back -back state champs for Hastings Tigers, three in four years, and now their fourth overall title dating back to 2007. When we come back, we move to Class A. Should be a good one, one of the top Class A teams maybe of all time. Let's see what we mean when we come back. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenues for schools and community services. Livestock enterprises also create jobs while contributing to existing businesses such as local banks and grocery stores. A thriving livestock industry helps maintain our current way of life, but also provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to raise awareness of the importance of animal agriculture to Nebraska. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey, honey. Can I keep it? I know, right? I'm gonna go strap it to the car. <laughs> Mom, do you have any idea how expensive books are? It was such a lovely time. Oh, you know what? Don't forget to give me that. Whoops, that was expensive. <laughs> I can pay for that. <sighs> In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Blackberry, US Bank is there when you need us. It's everything having someone to watch your back, to make things better, safer. As we get closer to the 2014 deadline to buy health insurance, rely on Blue. We'll help you navigate the new health care law and make smart choices for you and your family. Call or visit us at the Blue Store at NebraskaBlue.com. It's time. Find what you need. We've got your back. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. Tom Kelly's Pro Shop is your home for bowling supplies. Established in 1980, the shop offers 45 different shoe styles, including the complete line of Brunswick, thousands of balls, and over 200 different styles of bags. A father and son team with experience in drilling since 1958. Use customized hand measuring and the latest equipment to provide you with the right fit. You can walk in, find everything you need, and go bowling the same day. Tom Kelly's Pro Shop, located in Omaha and Norfolk. Everyone has a cell phone and they don't want to give it up. Distracted drivers are four times the risk of being in a crash. Reasonable people have compared the danger associated with talking on a cell phone when you're driving to the danger of drinking and driving. We've got to change society's view on texting and driving. It is irresponsibly dangerous. Watch the NET production of Distracted Driving. Monday night at 9 central time on NET1. Pick up a DVD of these state high school championships. Just log on to NHSBF.com and reserve your memories for a lifetime. DVDs of boys and girls. Nebraska High School Bowling Federation state championships are available. Fans here ready for this Class A showdown. It will be Fremont and Grand Island for the title. You could be looking right here at one of the best Class A teams in a long time. Alec Carr, just a sophomore. Cody Grubb, Tyler Sinebeck is a freshman. Jared Roberts and Zach Carr, the Alec and Zach Carr brothers, the Carr brothers. On the other side, we have Grand Island, Grand Island Wood River. It's B.J. Kramer, Tyler Crest, Jeff Allen, Blake Ernest, Tristan Smith, and Brad Reed, also a junior for Grand Island. Should be a good one. We'll chronicle these two teams, take a look at some outstanding averages for this team right here. This Fremont Tiger squad looking for its first ever state championship when we come back on NET Sports.
Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey honey, thanks for depositing that check for me today. Love you. Uh, love you too. I love you more. I love you way more. You're the best. You're way better. You're my huggy bear. <laughs> In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Blackberry, U.S. Bank is there when you need us. Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. Tom Kelly's Pro Shop is your home for bowling supplies. Established in 1980, the shop offers 45 different shoe styles, including the complete line of Brunswick, thousands of balls, and over 200 different styles of bags. A father and son team with experience in drilling since 1958. Use customized hand measuring and the latest equipment to provide you with the right fit. You can walk in, find everything you need, and go bowling the same day. Tom Kelly's Pro Shop, located in Omaha and Norfolk. Hello, I'm Kevin Kugler, inviting you to join the NET Sports Partners Club. With your support, NET brings you hundreds of hours of sports action each year. You count on NET for Husker Volleyball, Big Red Wrap-Up, and all the outstanding college and high school championship sports action in Nebraska. NET is Nebraska's home for sports, and sports partners like you make it happen. Thank you. You can also watch the 2014 Nebraska High School Boys Bowling Championships on your computer. You can watch them on your tablet, or your smartphone, or even wherever you have access to the internet at netnebraska.org slash sports. Or also download the new NET Nebraska app. Should be a good one here in Class A. Grand Island last won a state championship back in 2003. First appearance in 10 years for the Islanders. Fremont, the Tigers, first ever appearance here. Should be exciting match, and we were going to see, Steve, some outstanding young talent. There's one of them right there, Tyler Sidovec. Averages 210 in his freshman year. Oh, this is another two, two more programs, Larry. It's like many we've seen all day today. And last week with the girls that are products of, of great youth bowling programs. Fremont, Nebraska is another one of those communities that are blessed with two good bowling centers, 30 Bowl, and it's owned by Fremont head coach Terry Sinovic right there. You can see him on the right. The Plaza Lanes in Fremont also uh, strong local associations produce lots of great youth bowling. In Grand Island, same way, two great bowling centers out there in Grand Island, West Side Lanes. With Terry Fredrickson in Super Bowl with George Overfield. You just got to keep the pipeline full of potential bowlers, Larry, and then coach them up. That's right. So starting it off in the left lane, here's Alec Carr. Carr, a sophomore. Now, Steve, you're sitting down for this. He averages 233. That's why. What a great game. He's very direct. Plays up the boards, but a lot of speed, a lot of rubs. This is just a solid team, this Fremont team. 
Here's B.J. Kramer. Kramer with good reaction, leaves the 10 pin. Kramer is sophomore. Here's Cody Grubb, he'll turn it up a little bit. Grubb, a senior. Now in the right-hand lane, here's B.J. Kramer. Cross lane at the 10 pin and converts. Well, we saw earlier with the Hastings Aurora match, a lot of people having trouble with single pin spares. And uh, I'm going to see a little more hook out of the Class A players, a little more strength, a little more turn to the ball. It'll be interesting, interesting, Larry, to see what happens as the oil begins to change and migrate around on the lane a little bit if we see the same problems that cropped up in the Class B match earlier. Here's a freshman, Tyler Kress. Kress comes in high and leaves the 4-6. That's a tough conversion. Now on the left-hand lane, Tyler Sinovic, just a freshman, averages 210, youngest starter on the team. Sinovic turns it up. Messenger cannot trip the 10. Now the spare conversion on the right-hand lane, Tyler Kress, also a freshman. Both teams with a pretty good mixture of underclassmen and seniors. Yeah. Cross lane, no trouble at all for Tyler Sinovic. Important, stay clean. Here's Jeff Allen. Allen. Oh. Does not trip that forward. It's on the left-hand lane. Jared Roberts, a senior, averages 212, one of the team leaders. Jared was having trouble getting it back to the pocket in practice, and Coach Sinovec suggested either a ball change or a move right. He obviously listened and is flush. Conversion by Jeff Allen. These two, both these programs, Fremont going 10 and 0, sweeping the season earlier in the regular season and ripping an eight pin is the lefty Zach Carr. He's a junior. Now up on the right hand lane, Blake Ernest. Blake is a sophomore. Very direct and a great shot. Blake Ernest with the carry on the strike. Fremont all around the pocket, but yet to double. And a good conversion by Zach Carr. So now here's Tristan Smith. Senior averages 206. A little deeper inside, slaps the 10 out of there. And a double pulls it back to even. Well, I think it would have been a, uh, a fairly obvious statement to come in and say that Fremont would be the favorite in this match, but uh, Grand Island hanging right in there, staying shot for shot with Grand Island. Now we'll see this right lane over the course of the day has played a little tighter than the left lane. We'll see if it affects any of the right-handers. Here's Carr again, ringing 10-pin for Alec Carr. So on the left-hand lane, now B.J. Kramer with a chance to make it a three-back. Oh, what a shot, and that gives G.I. the lead. You know, this Fremont team, as talented as they are, they were taken to five games in both of their Baker matches yesterday. It's a slide, and it does, good cover. Here's Tyler Kress. And Kress right around the pocket, and he'll leave a solid 10. Now Cody Grubb, senior, averages 205. Right around the pocket and gets the carry. More of a uh, loop in his swing. Ball goes off to the right, off his hand immediately. He's throwing a little more of a scuffed ball, a little slower speed, gives the ball the opportunity to hook back. It's our first open frame with the error. Yep. And 
that lets Fremont leap into the lead now. They could extend their lead to 16 pins with a double. Turn it up. Oh, tough break. Tyler's last two shots are, are uh, kind of a slap 10 that didn't fall and uh, now a swishing 7 that didn't fall. So. Jeff Allen on the left lane. Leaves the ninth pin. And now for the spare conversion, very confidently steps up and drills it as Tyler Sinovac. And a good cover for Jeff Allen. Four pin lead for Fremont. So Tristan's. Smith will be up for GI, but first here's Roberts. Jared Roberts with the carry. That extends that lead to 14. An important shot here now for Blake Ernst. Blake carries it. So both with a strike in the ninth as we head to the 10th. And up now, Zach Carr. Zach the junior averages 230 and flush for Carr. Two more, and he can shut them out. A lot of loft there. It's going to go. It just looked like it was going to go high, and it did. And now one more. Possible 218 for Fremont. Best score possible now for Grand Island, 194. So any kind of a mark here, mark here take care of it. That'll do it. So Fremont will open up with a win in game number one here in the boys class A Nebraska High School Bowling Federation State Championships. And they did not miss the pocket, Steve. No, they you, didn't. You look at that, that game, look across the top row there. You see single pin, single pin, five single pins and six strikes to, to this point. And they'll bring in Austin Harmel. Harmel is senior. Averages 185. Great idea for Coach Terry Sinovec to get him in the game. It's a little wide, doesn't quite make it back, but that will do it. 215, the score for Fremont. And way to close it out for Grand Island. They'll finish with a 194. So a nice game by. GI just not enough to take down this very talented Tiger squad. One game to none. There you see Terry Sinovec shaking his players' hands. Terry's been in the game for a long time. You mentioned the proprietor at 30 Bowl. Is, he's there on your left. He was also a member of the University of Nebraska bowling team. Went on to bowl professionally for a couple of years. Terry does a great job at Fremont avid, avid promoter of the game and really focuses a lot of his energy in Fremont on youth bowling and especially high school bowling. Fremont Bowling Club has uh, been around uh, high school bowling for at least 20 years. Joined the Federation recently within the last uh, few years and uh, we're thrilled to have their competition as it is just a phenomenal program. Here's Alec Carr to start off game number two. Maybe a bit wide. Started up quick on Carr. Looks like he might have threw that just a little slower than he did there earlier, Larry. A chance for Grand Island to make a statement here with a spare. Got to shoot these corner pins. Cross lane with a plastic ball. Grand recovers it. Got the 3, 6, 7, 10. Makeable spare. You can go after three of these and easily slide the three into the seven. If you play it right, ball's going to have to hook it up. First chink for Fremont. And now up on the left lane, our first look at Bradley Reed. The junior averages 187. Ball into the two spot, and he flushes the pocket. A lot of speed, a lot of revs, keeps that ball on line. Rub gets it to carry. Yeah, 
Quickly up on the left-hand lane. Just a bit heavy for Jeff Allen. Here's Tyler Sinovec, the son of head coach Terry Sinovec. Two awful breaks earlier, and another break. It's two 10 pins and a seven. Match like this, Larry, where there's going to be a lot of strikes, going. you've got to put your spares up so you avoid falling behind. A good cover there by Grand Island, and now Tyler. I wonder if Tyler's nickname is Sino, like his dad was. His dad had a few names in college, so I can't share. <laughs> well, Terry is a great player, as you said, Bold for the University of Nebraska. Terry Bold uh, quite a bit mm -hmm. in the area. Competitively took a stint, moved to, I do believe, California for a while. They came did. back, bought mm -hmm. the 30 bowl in Fremont. And he and Michelle moved out there after college. And they just have done a great job in Fremont. We we are lucky enough to get a little bit of Fremont traffic in Elkhorn, and uh, people speak very highly of their operation. Stay quite busy. They'll be hosting, I do believe they're hosting the state tournament, I believe the men's state tournament next year in Fremont. Terrific shot by the senior, Jared Roberts. Grand Island still staying toe-to-toe -to -toe right now at Fremont. Important shot here for Tristan Smith to hold on to that lead. Can he get it to kick? He can. Just a tremendous release here by Zach Carr. Wow. Seen a few of those today. Yes, we have. The ball just sharply breaks at the back end, and today's bowling balls are so aggressive, there's very little deflection left in them, and the ball just drives that five straight back. Typical shot, the ball would take the nine or the eight out, but the ball just drives through the pocket so hard, doesn't deflect. Just got to man up and pick the spare up. Ooh. Ooh. A little tug of the heartstrings there for Zach. Thought he pulled it there, but good enough. So the two teams will switch lanes. You see still a 12-pin lead for Grand Island. Grand Island head coach Don Prawl in his third year with the Islanders. Here's Alec Carr for Fremont. to assume the older brother of Ryan. He is. Earlier this year, it was quite a feat as Alec, who just struck there, and his older brother, Zach, both shot 300 in the same game. One's a lefty, one's a righty. I doubt anybody could complain about the lane conditions at that point in time, <laughs> about them being one-sided one or the other. There's Don Prawl. It's actually Brad what, you know, Barnes. You're right, it was. Barnes, yep. excuse me, the assistant coach. Name on the front gave it away. Yep. Big number 17 here, Bradley Reed. Hard and straight, but with a lot of forward revs. Wow. Strike fest here at Sun Valley Lanes right now. Still a 12 pin lead for Grand Island. See if Sinovec can strike. Yeah, he gets Slaps one. Slaps out that 10 pin. Rice nice smile there, finally. Tells his dad. Saw dad walk over to him and help him make an adjustment after that last. It's not always easy, the father son coaching. Nope. That is true, and you just you know, tell everybody to keep their head about him and get a. Treat him like the rest of the team. Wow, just a lot of speed and a lot of revolutions. Man, it is just a, a, it, it's a treat watching some of these guys. Yeah. Different styles. You got some guys that kind of slow hook it a little bit. Good try at the 4 9. It's going to put Fremont into the lead now by, with this spare, it'll be 20 plus, 20 plus yeah. pins. Be interesting to see the spare attempt here. Hard and straight. Took his fingers out of the ball. Right down the middle. That, that is a very, very good game there. Yep. Jared Roberts. Mm -hmm. I like this game too. Blake Ernst. Very simple game, simple arm swing. Great result. Iron 
He's just a sophomore. So now the lefty, Zach Card. Uh oh, tugged it, knew it, and got away with it. He saw the reaction when it left his hand. Gives Grand Island a chance to win the game here. They're going to need to strike for sure on this right ball, here. Larry. Must strike. Oh, what a good shot. Just maybe didn't finish the way he wanted it to. Left that week 10. Best they could shoot now is 194. Fremont already has 195 in the bag, so game number two goes to Fremont. Whew, Just exactly, enough. Huh? Yeah. 195, 194 potential for Grand Island. Let's get the spare picked up here. First Go error on. of the match, by the way. Excuse me, Steve. That, that's First error of the match for Freeman. Very true. And this is where here, if you've got an extra player, you might want to insert him into the match, give him a chance. If you've got a player that might be struggling, a chance to make a ball change or adjustment on the approach. That's the one of the luxuries you get of Baker-style bowling. You can substitute in and out. That's a better shot. So 194, 195, Fremont wins it. A pair of buck 94s for Grand Island, and that's usually pretty good yep. in most situations, but you're bowling against Fremont High School and tough to keep up. So ready now for game number three, Fremont on top two games to none, and a win here would send a first ever state championship Back to Fremont. So up on the left-hand lane, here's Alec Carr. Man, just a fantastic a solid game, isn't it? rotation of the wrist. He gets that into the lane in a hurry. One of Terry's assistant coaches is Ryan Carr. He's back there in the lineup. Ryan, a great bowler, bowled a lot of tournaments with Ryan in the past. And yep. Fremont has long been known for some great players. Coming out of town, Keith Smith is one that comes to mind in the mm -hmm. Nebraska Bowling Hall of Fame. Keith, one of the premier left-handers in Nebraska bowling for a long time. Of course, Terry Sinovec is another one. A lot of great players came from Fremont, dominated a lot of tournaments, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Grand Island can't get their daubers too far down here, almost a to the point where they're going to have to start going for some of these larger splits. Fremont out to the quick double. And now Sinovec will try to make it three in a row. Just rips through. Pounds the hole. Straight up the boards. Leaves a solid nine. Solid nine for Bradley Reed. Back in our day, Larry, or I guess my day, he'd leave a lot of weak eights yeah. where the ball wouldn't wouldn't take the uh, the five out hard enough to carry the eight. And nowadays, that, back to back that's nine. just really almost just as prevalent as a ten pin in a way. You, you see so many nine pins for right-handers because the equipment and the amount of of power that they throw the ball with just overpowers the pins, yeah. drives that five straight back. Well, this uh, Fremont team is a buzzsaw, aren't they? Off to the quick three bagger, and then they flush a nine pin. Roberts does. Great cover, right at it, straight at it. So GI needs to start striking. They leave the tank. Jeff Allen. So now in the left-hand lane here is Zach Carr. Wow. What a shot by this, Carr. This is just uh, a clinic being put on right now. Well, we talked about it off the top. Maybe one of the top Class A teams we've seen in a long time. You have two players averaging above 230 in Federation play. A freshman averaging 210, a senior averaging 212, and low average on the team is 205. A couple of uh, teams that come to mind in Class A in the past, a couple of the Columbus teams yeah. that were around with uh, John Eckholt as the coach and a couple of his sons, uh, 
were really, really good. A lot of those uh, Columbus teams, though, were great spare shooters, didn't have the uh, the striking machine that the Fremont uh, Tigers do here, but just got it done a different way. You can see the wind just coming out of the sails now for the Islanders as shoot the double pinochle there, and everybody's going to have to hope for a massive change of events here. Tristan Smith, though, another good shot maker. Gets that ball out on the lane, but keeps it on line at the pocket. Ball finishes at just the right point to just saw everything out of the way. Smith will try to get him going. Fremont looking for a double. As Alec Carr up on the right-hand lane. Ball that he's throwing is a is a harder, more less uh, aggressive, I guess should say, reactive resin ball. And the things he does to that ball, uh, I can't do to a ball scuffed with 20 grit sandpaper. <laughs> Got it a little wide there, though, leaving the 2 4 5. There's a better shot. And a big double, an important double for Grand Island. Not out of this yet. They can string some together. Alec Carr with the spare try, and he does. 8 14, his high series. Obviously, he has the 300. Here's Reed. Pulled it. That's it. Nope. Leaves the three. He knew it when it came off his hand. He was pointing for it to get over. Cody Grubb now, his high series 797. Watch Cody as he a little sorry, Larry, a little slower there with the ball. Loops it back in. And right now it's just a matter of how how far up into the 200s Fremont's going to be in this game as they're warming up the cars, getting ready to head back up the highway to Fremont. It's, it is just a buzzsaw that Grand Island has ran into. Grand Island is another, another program that has been around, produced some great teams. They were state champions in 2010. Girls program has had some great players over time. Just bad timing. Caught these guys at the right time. Kind of an ugly split on lane 28 for Tyler Senevec. He's going to try and slide that three pin into the four and the seven. To takes the count instead. It's not completely out of the realm of possibility, Larry, but Grand Island needs to strike right now. Right Blake here. Ernst has got to get it done. Needs the double. And he got it. Well, he's just got a simple game. Doesn't have the tall arm swing that some of the Fremont bowlers does, but he's compact. Ball stays on, on line down the lane. Very, very similar to this gentleman right here, Jared Roberts. Got that way wide. Yep. So not out of it yet. Still need this one, though. Well, An important one here for Tristan Smith. It's pretty much a must strike ball, Larry. Yep. Oh, too bad. Yep. Made a good shot. Best possible score now for Grand Island is going to be 181 with a spare strike. So basically, need a spare here and some count, and yep. Fremont will be state champions. Good cover. And in fact, they're just going to. Six pins is all he needs. And the good cover by Tristan Smith was a great season for Grand Island, 11-2 on the year, but they ran into maybe one of the best teams in the state in a long time. There's Carr. Pounds the hole to Zach Carr. And Tristan Smith to close it out for the Islanders. So GI will finish with a 181 and Quick congratulations to the Islanders, head coach Don Prawl, assistant Brad Ernst, as they finish runner-up in the state. 
And now we see Tyler Push in the game, and Tyler Push, just a freshman. And as Fremont loses two seniors next year in Cody Grubb and Jared Roberts, no doubt that Tyler Push will be part of the future there in Fremont. Boy, what do you have coming back, though? You have Zach Carr, Alec Carr, both coming back along with the freshman, Sinovec, this freshman, Tyler Push. This Fremont team might be good for a while. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Thanks. Jugged it a little bit right into the, right into the hole, leaves an eye. That'll close it out. And Fremont finishes with a 2-14, and the Tigers will take home to Fremont their first ever Nebraska High School Bowling Federation State Championship. Congratulations, Coach Terry Sinovec and the Tigers. When we come back, we'll hear from the champs and the players right here on NET. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey, honey, can I keep it? I know, right? I'm going to go strap it to the car. <laughs> Mom, do you have any idea how expensive books are? It was such a lovely time. Oh, you know what? Don't forget to give me that. Whoops, that was expensive. <laughs> I can pay for that. In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry, U.S. Bank is there when you need us. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. It's everything. Having someone to watch your back. To make things better, safer. As we get closer to the 2014 deadline to buy health insurance, rely on blue. We'll help you navigate the new health care law and make smart choices for you and your family. Call or visit us at the Blue Store at NebraskaBlue.com. It's time. Find what you need. We've got your back. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenues for schools and community services. Livestock enterprises also create jobs while contributing to existing businesses such as local banks and grocery stores. A thriving livestock industry helps maintain our current way of life, but also provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to raise awareness of the importance of animal agriculture to Nebraska. Watch NET Sports anytime, anywhere. Download the free NET Nebraska app today. Watch live streaming of the NSAA High School Championships, college player profiles, full-length episodes from Big Red Wrap-Up, and so much more. The new NET Nebraska app makes it easier than ever to follow the NET sports you want, when and where you want it. Get the app at netnebraska.org slash apps. Canadian folk singer Gordon Lightfoot performs his timeless hits in this very special concert. Don't miss this legendary songwriter and five-time Grammy nominee, Gordon Lightfoot, live in Reno, Friday night at 8 central on NET1. So back at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Class A state championship in the books, and we said they were good, and they swept it. Fremont over Grand Island, 3-0. Steve Simpek is down with the champs. Well, congratulations, guys. Great job. Jared, you're the, uh, you're the only senior, I do believe, right? There might be one other on the team. There's one other on the, te There's one other on the team. All right, well. I tell you, um, I, I think you've set the table for uh, for the, a great future. You've uh, brought home your head coach's uh, first year of being head coach. He gets to be state champion on his first try. Uh, do you guys even have to practice any spares as many strikes as you throw? 
Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we all get out, try to get out, practice four or five times a week. Uh, everybody's out there, you know, coaches come down and watch us, try to help us fix everything that we need to fix. Um, if we're doing something wrong, you know, they're always there trying to help us. And I tell them I make you work on spares. Yeah, they make us shoot spares because they know that that's what wins those tournaments like this and bring home state titles. Well, that's a great job, Terry. Your first year as head coach, and uh, just real quick, tell us a little bit about the Fremont Bowling Club. It's been around a long time. It's probably been one of the model clubs, uh, probably out of any high school club I could think of in Nebraska, maybe even in the in the United States. Wow, that's a big compliment, and that's a big compliment to Al Nell. Al founded the uh, the club in '92, and uh, they've had a lot of success. Had a lot of talent go through it. Um, great group of uh, bowling uh, proprietors there, uh, bowling families. Um, it just it's amazing how it just continues on and on and on well it's a testament to your youth program and, and you have quite the youth program there in Fremont both the your center and the other center in town and just keep filling the pipeline and and uh, uh, I I would say you're set up pretty good for the next at least couple of years here with this squad you've got I would like to think so because we have a couple more freshmen coming up and, and then we have another group of fourth fifth sixth graders that are just taking this game to heart and they're, they're loving the sport and and so we may be around for a while you can't what? retire yet I'm not taking your job yet all right, well, congratulations to Coach Sinovec and the Fremont Tigers Class A Boys State Champions. Larry, back to you. All right, congratulations, Coach Sinovec, and congratulations to the Fremont fans. The Tigers win state. And speaking of Fremont, you will see them dotted throughout the top ten of the individual standings as well. Singles were contested on the day before these championships. Alec Carr, Tyler Sinovec, 1-2 from Fremont. You'll also see Zach Carr in there as well. Lincoln East well represented in that second five, which would be second team All-State. Now for the medal and trophy presentations, let's go to Greg Porchy. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we keep it going for our two finalists. And now for the awards presentation. Your Class A boys runner-up, the Grand Island Islanders, Coach Don Peral and Brad Ernest. Number 17, Bradley Reed. Number 14, Tyler Kress. Number eight, Jeff Allen. Number five, Blake Ernest. Number 21, Tristan Smith. Number seven, Billy Kramer. And gentlemen, here's your runner-up trophy. Congratulations to the Grand Island Islanders, your Class A boys runner-up. Now, here is your 2013-2014 Class A Boys Champions, the Fremont Tigers. <laughs> Coaches Terry Sinovec and Ryan Carr. Number 72, Alec Carr. Number 99, Cody Grubb. Number 47, Tyler Sinovec. Number 83, Jared Roberts. Number 24, Zach Carr. Number 22, Austin Harmel. Yeah. 
Number five, Tyler Push. And gentlemen, here's your championship trophy. Congratulations to the 2013-2014 Class A Boys Champions. So once again, congratulations to Fremont, your state champions in boys Class A. They win it 3-0. It's been a terrific day of state championships. I think we've seen two of the better teams in their classes in a long time. Clarkson Lee wins it in D this morning. North Bend, maybe the best Class C team we've seen in a long time. Hastings wins another one in Class B. And Fremont, maybe the best team in Class A in a while as well. So some outstanding bowling here in 2014 in the Nebraska High School Boys State Championships. Congratulations to all our champions. That will do it for the Boys State title. I'm Larry Putney for Steve Simpek and our entire NET Sports Production crew. Thank you so much for joining us right here at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. For the Nebraska High School Boys Bowling Federation Championship, we will see you next week right here on NET Sports. Behind your outlet are more than 6,000 public power employees working tirelessly to generate and deliver safe, affordable, reliable electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Since they are customer owners themselves, you can count on them to have your best interests and those of the community they serve at heart. Neighbors serving neighbors. That's public power. Funding for the NHSBF State Championships was provided by the Lincoln Bowling Association through grants from the Allen and Marsha Bear Foundation and the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. Reminding you that more than 1,000 high school students compete statewide in varsity bowling. Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. For nearly 60 years, NET has captured the essence of the people the history and the landscapes of the Great Plains and conveyed those rich stories and images to every home in Nebraska and to the rest of the country. Stories that reflect our ties to this land that has defined us. You don't need to talk a lot about it to show the value. All you have to do is just sit here for a minute and look. Stories of our response as a state and a region to the challenges of war. Stories that reflect on our heritage and cultures, where myth sometimes collides with historical fact. The Beef State. In those decades, NET has set national standards for award-winning storytelling, journalistic integrity, educational excellence. And that's all thanks to a groundbreaking partnership between the state, the university, and the people of Nebraska, which has and will continue to sustain well into the future. Make your gift of support to NET right now. Thank you. <laughs>